So one of the really cool things that we can do with machine learning is actually figure out whether or not the bookies have likely got their pricing wrong. And if they've got their pricing wrong, we can exploit that. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to get the data, how I'm going to think about the problem. We're then going to go and run the data through ML Trainer here for machine learning without using any code. We're just going to do it very quickly. And I'm going to give you my thoughts. But I'm telling you now, we're going to have some really interesting findings. And we're going to predict whether or not the bookies got the pricing right for the home team winning or losing any given football game. And if we can get just a slight edge up on the bookies, that can give us a tremendous advantage when it comes to actually trading those odds. I don't want to say betting because I don't really believe in betting or gambling. Here I'm talking about trading, right? So getting a statistical edge and then using that to your advantage. So this is going to be really cool if you're into this kind of stuff then stick around. If you're not into machine learning, you're going to find this really boring. So you'll want to just skip this video. Right. So the first thing is I'm over here on Kaggle because this is where I'm going to download my data from. But I've found a data set already and I'm going to show you exactly how I found it. I found it within about five to 10 minutes. It really didn't take me long. And I also know where this person on Kaggle got their data from. So I'm actually going to start there. So the first thing is if I go to footballdata.co.uk, and you go to historical data and scroll down, you have all these different uh, football stats that or football data results that you can download for whatever purposes, in our case, machine learning. So for example, if I go to England football results here, and then I've got, you know, the different seasons, etc. I don't know much about football or soccer, it's not American football, we're talking about soccer here. I don't know that much about it, embarrassingly, so I can't use all the terminology. But let me download this um, file over here as an example, right? So here we go. So here's the data that this website provides for that specific Excel file. And there's only about 289 rows of data, which is fine, because we could just download each one and paste all the data together, um, or aggregate that together. But we don't need to because someone's already done it for us. I found it on Kaggle. And we're just going to use that data set. But I just want to show you you know, how this data is structured, because there's a lot of column names that you're not going to know what they mean. But if you go over here to this notes.txt file, um, it actually tells you, right? So HTR is halftime results, HS is home team shots, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And so what we're going to try to do here is we're going to try to avoid using any columns that uh, represent data that happened during the game because it's just very unlikely that you're going to know any of that stuff before the game starts, which is where in our strategy, right, we, we want to place the trade before the game starts. So I'm going to really just bring this down. I'm going to cut this down to bare bones, absolute bare bones. Um, and then we will go, you know, we will go from there. So let's move on here. So that's where the data comes from. Now, if you go to Kaggle, so if you go to, you know, Kaggle.com, like, like such, and put in, you know, data sets, uh, just like I've typed in here in the address bar. And then, you know, you can punch in whatever data set you want. This could be basketball you want to do, or, you know, whatever it is, stock prices, whatever it is. Um, I'm going to put in football, and I'm going to put in odds, because I want other bookies odds as well. And then here, I'm going to select this one here. This is the one I like football results, um, and betting odds data of EPL. So when you have a look at this data, so if I scroll down, you'll see that when I look at the column headings, so away team, FTHG, FTA, you know, this is clearly coming from footballdata.co.uk, right? So that's where the data is coming from. I'm going to download the full data set with odds. So I'm just going to go ahead and download that. Uh, I'm already logged into Kaggle. It's free, by the way, Kaggle's free. Um, so, you know, you, you might need to log in when you're downloading that. So with that said, let me just go and open up the folder here. Um, you can see I've already downloaded it before. But anyway, here we go. If I open up this archive folder, and I scroll up to the top, you can see final data set with odds. So if I double click on that, I get pretty much the same thing. So here's what it was from the other website. And here's what it is now. And if I hit command or control down, you can see now I've got 6000 rows of data because this person has already gone to the trouble to go and copy and paste data and append it all together, etc. So that's that's really cool. 
Now, they've also added in some other features that they wanted included in the analysis for machine learning. And truthfully, I don't even know what a lot of it means. So I'm just going to delete it out. I don't want anything that has a possibility of look ahead bias in it. But the one column I am interested in is this full time result. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make a lot of changes just in Excel because it'll be really quick. So I'm going to copy that column or cut it and I'm going to paste it on the end here. So any of these columns on the end are going to represent, you know, what we're playing with. And you can see here, you know, here they had full time result, not home, home. So what this person had done instead of instead of having home draw away as the signal, they just wanted some kind of binary classification, which is also my favorite type of machine learning. And here, so we have NH for not home and H for home. So if I go to the left here, um, you know, home would be Blackburn, Cholton, etc. Uh, actually, I've got a funny story of Cholton, maybe I'll tell you sometime. Uh, Fulham, uh, all of that jazz over here, right? So this tells you who won, etc. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just instead of using the platform, I'm just going to do it here. So I'm going to say, you know, if, um, you know, this here is equal to uh, home, then, you know, put a one saying the whole team one, otherwise put a zero. And there you go. So all that's going to do is take these NHs and H's and make them numbers because with machine learning models, typically your models always going to need to look at numbers, not words. So that's the first thing I, I'm going to do. And I'm going to go and paste the values over here. And then I'm going to delete that column there. So now we've got zeros and ones much easier. So one means home team away, zero means they didn't. And on the right here, these are all the bookies, right? So if I was to show you, for example, IWH or B365H, right? If we go over here to uh, here, you'll, you'll see down here. So B365H is bet 365 home win odds. So these are the bookies. This is telling me what the odds were from all the bookies. Now, this is really useful. This is actually awesome. Um, you know, IWH is into Witten. I don't know who they are. Ladbrokes, I've heard of. You know, these are all the bookies, basically. Um, so if I go back here, this tells me what Bet365 thought would be the results in terms of the home team. So whatever the lower number is, is going to be the lower return. I, it's the team they think is most likely to win. Right. So, for example, if, you know, a uh, uh, home team here, here, you can see the away team was 2.1 home team was three. So they actually thought the away team was more likely to win. So let's say we want to trade against bet three, six, five. Right. So I'm going to pick that's the bookie that I'm going to go after here. Sorry, bet three, six, five, if you're watching this. But, you know, we're going to we're going to come after you here in terms of our trading and see if we can beat you and take some of your money. So this is what we're going to do. So here I'm going to just call this, you know, um, bookie, uh, uh, bookie pred, meaning bookies prediction. It doesn't matter what I call that column. And then I'm just going to say, you know, if this cell over here is less than this cell. Uh, and in fact, actually, what I need to do is put this in an and because I need multiple things to be true. So if that is less than that and that is less than that, i.e. it's less than column A, R and column A, um, S, then put a one, otherwise put a zero. So a one means that bet three, six, five thinks that the home team is going to win. Now, what's interesting is if you look at the full time results here, the FTR column, um, this, this is very, very interesting, because what this is telling us is that um, bet three, six, five was wrong here. So here they said a one, but actually what happened is the home team didn't win. Here they were right, here they were wrong. They were right on all of those, they were right on that, they were right on that, they were right on all those, they were wrong on this. If we can predict with better than 50, let's call it 52% accuracy to take into account spreads and costs and whatever, then we have an edge on them. And if they get this wrong, then, and we're betting against them, then we're getting really high odds, right? Because look at the returns here of the away and the draw. Now, of course, you could customize what you want to try to trade here, right? You can customize what you want to predict. You might be able to get an even better type of scenario where even if you were right, just 2% of the time more, your returns are massive. Um, that's part of the fun, right? That's, that's why I geek out on this stuff is because you can do some really cool stuff with it. So let's just go with this for now. So 
I know that they predicted a one, but in reality, what happened here is we had a zero. So the question is, can we predict how often they are incorrect? And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this target, I could call it whatever I want, but th the target always represents to me what I'm trying to predict, right? So here, I'm going to say, you know, if, um, let's say, and here, or all, all we need to do actually is just say if that is not equal to that. So that is greater or less than that, put a one, otherwise put a zero. So a one means they got it wrong, a zero means they got it right. So what we want to do is we want to be able to predict the ones, right? Did they get it wrong? That's what we care about. So now what's really important is when we're training the model, there's all sorts of columns I don't want included. So I'm just going to delete them here. I could delete them on the platform, but I'm going to do it here. Full, uh, half, full-time half goals. I, I don't know. I can't be bothered to check what that means, but it's definitely in-game stuff. I'm just going to delete all those columns. Uh, I don't know what this HM is over here. Maybe, you know, you can punch it in the comments, but this person's clearly put you know, what had happened before maybe or something like that. I'm just going to get rid of those because I don't know what they are. Um, and then here LP, let's see, uh, leadership points. Is that what that means? Let's just have a look here. Um, home team, uh, home team, away team LP. Yeah, that's another thing that they've added in. So I don't really know what that is. And I don't know how to get it. So all of that, I'm just going to delete. And I'm going to delete those two here. And then here, the home win streak. So this is interesting. They've put some win streak data in. Most of the time it's zero, but you can see they've got the occasional one here. I'll just leave that in for now because it's data I think I could get myself if I needed to. Um, and then uh, half time goals, uh, away time goals, difference in points. This is all stuff I want to take out here. So basically, I'm going to put in some historical data and the bookies odds. And that's all. Now you could look at this and you could go, well, Sean, that's kind of rubbish because you could get so much better data in here and you'd be right. But, you know, I don't want this video to be hours and hours long. Um, and if it works with just this data, then it should get you excited about all the other data you could add into this. Um, but here's all the, you know, the bookie odds information, which should be known by the time it, it gets to the game, etc. And here we go. So now what we need to do is upload this into the tool. Um, so I'm going to just go here, file, save as, and I'm going to put this here to my desktop. I'm going to overwrite this other file I have called football. I'm just going to replace that. So I'm just going to save the file uh, as a CSV file for football. Now, what's really important actually is that we don't include this FTR. Um, you know, we don't include that in the training because that's literally saying what the result's going to be. So your model will be 100% correct. It's like, we don't want to include that. The bookie prediction we can leave in because that's still the bookie could have got that wrong, right? So, so let's go over here. Now is when we go over to the tool. So what I'm going to do, and by the way, for those of you who aren't on Crypto Wizards, you can just use a machine learning model called Logistic Regression or uh, XG Boost or Cat Boost or Light GBM. You could use one of those models um, using Python or something like that to do what I'm about to do uh, here, by the way, with the machine learning. So here I'm going to go to data engineer and I'm just going to add in or data builder, sorry, and I'm just going to upload that file. So let's just browse for the file here, football CSV and upload that. And the reason I did a lot of stuff in Excel is because I'm just used to using Excel as well. It's very quick. So here I'm going to go to my data engineer now and load up that uh, file to make sure it's all there. And here it is, right? It's got all those columns we had seen before. It's even got the full time result in it, which we're not going to use for machine learning. Now, one of the issues we're going to have here is a couple issues we're going to have. One, I've got this unnamed column. I'll just ignore it. Actually, we don't need it. Um, we've got the date. I'm going to ignore that too. That shouldn't, that really shouldn't be relevant from the type of analysis I want to do. The home team and away team. The problem I have is these are not numbers. These are in text. So what I do is I'll go to ML prep. This is machine learning prep. Just refresh the analysis. And this is recommending, it highlights in blue what it recommends we should do here with any text columns. So let's just label encode those. And I'll show you what that would have just done. So let's let it go and make that adjustment. Uh, and then I'll go over here to view table. And you can see at the very end of the table, it's, it's added in home team LE. LE means label encoded, away team LE, that's label encoded. And then it's given these all numbers. 
So for example, the number three over here, or let me see if there's a number I can see repeats uh, here. Not so much. So here's the number three, for example, just take my word for it, that relates to Blackburn. So if you see Blackburn again somewhere, you'll see it's, it's being categorized as the number three, and this just helps the machine learning model. And that's good to go. So here's our target. This is what we want to predict. So I'm going to go over to our uh, ML trainer, which is this, this tool down here, right? ML trainer. And I'm going to select the football CSV. And what I want to do here is I want to predict the target. And the target, because it's, you know, it, it's a, a discrete item, it's not continuous like the number 453.1. It's, you know, one or zero or one, two, three, four, five. It's a classification item. So I'm going to select target here. And because it's zero or one, it's also known as what's called binary classification, which you would have seen from prior videos. It's honestly my favorite type of machine learning. It's, it's awesome. This is saying, okay, what do we want to include in the analysis? So this is where we have to be really careful. I'm going to select everything, but then I'm going to remove FTR, which is full time result, because that's, that, that's telling it what the answer was. I can't have it see that. Right? It's not going to be a helpful machine learning model if it relies upon the future to make predictions. Right, it, You have to build in for it not to. So I'm going to remove this unnamed zero and then the date is already removed because it's, it's not a number type category. So that's already been removed here for me. And everything else looks good. You know, uh, bookie pred, fine. Uh, home team, uh, this is the label encoded. So this is the away team and the ho team and what all the other odds were for all the other bookies. Now, this gets kind of interesting. And for those of you who have been using this on the platform, you would notice from today, I've made some upgrades here. So um, I'll talk more about those in the future, but I've put descriptions of what they do here. And if you're not sure, you can just set this to auto. But just bear in mind, if you put it to auto, it's going to be much slower because it automatically finds some good parameters for you. So just bear that in mind. Um, here, I've got 5% of the data is going to be put out of sample and then it'll be used in the end. And I'll show you what that looks like. And that basically gives us our predictions, right? So that'll actually tell us what it thinks the next game, what it thinks the results of the next game are gonna be, which is really cool. Um, but anyway, let's do that. And then in terms of the uh, optimized preference, this is also new. I can decide whether I wanna just be optimizing for genu general accuracy or precision. Precision is what's really important if you're doing trading or betting in any way. Right, precision means that you're, you're trying to optimize for you to be right when you've placed a trade. It doesn't care about all the trades you didn't place that you could have. Right, if you want those, you can put in general accuracy. But here, I'm interested in you know, placing trades and getting those correct. Um, I don't care about the trades I didn't place. I care about the ones I did place you know, and, and making sure those are accurate. So precision, whenever you're doing trading or betting related stuff, usually you want to optimize for precision otherwise just general accuracy. And then here I'm going to use mixed because it's not a time series data set really. Um, you know, every row of data is, it, it's the sequence of it doesn't really matter. So it doesn't matter at all actually. So this shuffles the data and makes it even better for training. And then I'm just going to say this is, you know, ML football or uh, actually the way I like to do it is call it, you know, football underscore ML or whatever and hit run. So this is now going and it's doing all the learning and it's very exciting so we're going to see how it does all right awesome so here we go so again you'll notice a lot of changes have been made made here so don't feel nervous about that but the first thing i want to point you to here is based on what the bookie is predicting so bet 365 in our case that's where it's getting most of its juice from so it knows pretty much based on the number uh, based on what Bet365 is doing here, um, whether or not it's likely going to be something or not. But it can also see, it, it's also weighing up some of the other Bet365 options. And it can also see, I think this is William Hill. Yeah, WHD for draw. It's using all of this other stuff as well. So it's getting some, some small incremental benefits to improving over and above what Bet365 is doing. Now let's have a look at the results. This table down here is what matters to me. A one means that we got it right over the bookie. A zero means the bookie's right. And so here you can see that the bookie's right, you know, 70% of the time. But look at this. We're right 56% of the time. 
So we we have a 6% edge in, and let's call it 4% if you take into account trading fees and costs or whatever. We have an edge here on the bookies and I've used hardly any data other than what the other bookies were giving, really. So a, a richer data set with a lot more information on it could give you another 2% or 5%, imagine that. And I just want to point out here that those times where you're correct, your payout is huge because whenever you're, if you were betting with the bookies, so if I was to go back here and place a trade with Bet365 where the odds are only 1.72, then, you know, I'm risking 100% of my capital to make for every $1, 72 cents, basically. That's how I look at that. Um, so, so I'm not, and I could have got that wrong, but anyway, that's, that's kind of how it works. So if you're going with the bookie odds here and they are the lower odds, right? They are the winning odds. You're always getting the least payback as comparison to the other odds. So not only do we have an edge here in terms of percentage, but the odds are such that if we bet against our payout is even greater. So this to me, you know, when I saw this, I thought this was actually really exciting. And I literally spent like 10 minutes, 15 minutes after downloading the data to um, to look at this. And I just had to do the video because I know you had asked me on the channel to do, you know, football betting with machine learning. And I, I looked at this and I was like, wow, man, I should really spend more time on this because it looks very promising. And right now we're looking at the test data set, you know, the train data set, it was actually 58%. And the reason I, I look at the difference between those two, and this is again, thanks to Jacques, because he pointed out this, the reason I made the improvements on this platform is he pointed out that some of the models were definitely overfitting. This helps me see if that's the case. Um, so here's the results for train, test, and out of sample. OOS is out of sample. So the training data set is kind of irrelevant in a sense. It's just used as a benchmark to compare against the test. Right. So if training looks super great and test looks awful, trust me, your model's not great. Right. Test and out of sample. That's where I want to see consistency across the board against the training. So here's a PDF. I'm going to download that and just get a lot more detail uh, around what's actually going on here. So here's all the results between just the training. So this is, you know, the model kind of fitting to the data, the test, it testing what it fit to um, and, and seeing how how good it was. And then the out of sample, which is data that then got introduced subsequently. Down here is a confusion matrix. This basically shows you, you know, what was uh, actual versus what was predicted and how many were right in each bucket. And then uh, over here are some of the curves we've spoken about before, etc. I'm not going to get too much into that stuff. But this here is very interesting, right? So especially log loss against error, uh, etc. This tells me, am I overtraining? And really, I'm not so much because what I'm seeing is the error keeps going down up until about this point. So like from about here onwards, you can see my test error starts increasing as I do more training rounds. So this is this means it's starting to overfit around here. So one of the things I can do is I can go to my model and I can introduce, uh, for example, down here, this here ES, which is early stopping, or I can just reduce the number of rounds. Right. So I can just reduce this number of estimators here, uh, et cetera, to to combat that. So no big deal. It doesn't look too bad. Um, here's that same feature importance we saw before. So in other words, you know, there's a plethora of information here and I don't want to make this video super long. But the message I do want to give you is you can use machine learning to get an edge in sports betting. That's for damn sure. Like you absolutely can. And the one thing I really like about this approach, although I'm sure you will be watching this and you will see all sorts of flaws in my thinking, and please put those in the comments. You know, I'm not precious. Um, feel free to, to disagree with anything there. Um, but what I like about this is I'm betting against terrible odds and therefore I'm getting great odds if I'm right. And so this looked really helpful and it just made me wonder, you know, how can I enrich this data set? So, you know, if you guys and girls watching this have an idea on how you think you could enrich this data set, what are the data sources you would use so that you could actually just put together an army of information, then you, you could pick off any one of these. You know, it might not even just be 
be Bet365. You could test this for away, you could test it for draw, you could test it for different bookies, and you could find, you know, where is the person or the bookie who's getting this the most wrong the most often. Um, and therefore, you know, there's so much data science you can do on this. It's crazy and it just gets me very excited. I hope you enjoyed the video. I loved making it for you. I know I worked for many hours and days on making those model improvements and I'm really glad I did because clearly they're working very well. Thanks to Jacques for the recommendations. Actually, just very quickly as well, I forgot to mention when you go to Data Engineer after you've run the machine learning, you will get that file that you saved. So go to the football underscore ML and it will actually tell you, so you don't even need to download the file. You can if you want to, but it'll actually tell you what the prediction is for the next game. So if you were using this with live data and you didn't know, right? You, you didn't know what the actual result was, um, this would tell you. So this very last cell in the very last row, whenever you're doing machine learning here, it will tell you what it's predicting in the, into the future. Uh, not just comparing to how it would have done in the past, but it'll actually give you tomorrow's results as well.